Okay, today we're going to continue talking about solving uh, equations. Last time we talked about solving equations with radicals in it. Um, now we're going to talk about how to solve equations with rational exponents. Before we get to all of that, a couple of things I want to make sure that we're clear on, right? Um, first thing is... Um, We're solving this equation here, x squared equals 4. We know at this point that you're going to square root both sides, right? But, um, and we're even backwards, right? If we, we're even clear at this point to go backwards. If we have the square root of x equals 2, we know that we're going to raise both sides to the power of 2. We're going to square both sides, right? But, and that's probably more relevant here. But why? Why does that work? We know that squares and square roots are going to eliminate each other, but why? I mentioned this for a second last um, when we talked about solving radical equations, but didn't spend a lot of time on it. But think about rewriting this radical in exponent form, right? We would rewrite it as x to the one-half power. Then if we square that, the reason why squares and square roots eliminate each other is because now we've got to multiply these two exponents. And 2 times a half is 1. So we get x to the first power equals 2 squared. Well, x to the first power is just x. So now the square root that was originally over here is gone. Right? So it's all about multiplying these two exponents, but specifically multiplying those exponents to get 1. Okay? We want to hang on to that. Um, that idea so that we can use that with our rational exponents in just a second, okay? A couple other things. Um, all right, so when we're solving uh, this equation, x squared equals 4, right? Like I said, we're going to square root both sides. Now we understand that it, it has a, a tie between rational exponents and then multiplying out to 1. Okay, but anyway, we know that we get x equals, and then the square root of 4, when we square root um, to solve an equation, we know we have to put plus or minus, make this plus or minus 2, right? Because if you put in 2 for x, 2 squared is 4, but if you put in negative 2 for x, negative 2 squared is also 4. So we have to include the, pos uh, the positive and negative of both sides, right? Um, same thing should be true if we're solving an equation that had x to the fourth in it, right? Now you're going to take the fourth root to undo that fourth power, and we get x equals, and we have to go plus or minus 2 again, right? Because, again, we want to, obviously, if we plug in 2 for x uh, up in the, uh, the original equation here, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16, but so is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. These guys multiply out to 4, these guys multiply out to 4, positive 4, and then we're going to get 16 down here. So, so far we have to make sure that we include plus or minus when we're solving these equations. But what if we had x to the third equals um, 27? And we know we have to cube root both sides to undo that exponent, right? Do we have to go plus or minus 3 here? And the answer is no, right? Because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. But negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is not positive 27. This is 9. You multiply these guys and you get negative 27. So negative 3 wouldn't work here. So you don't have to worry about plus or minus. The moral of the story is this. When you're taking the even root to solve an equation, when you're taking the even root of a variable to solve an equation, you have to include the plus or minus. But if you're taking the odd root, you do not. And it's all about how many negatives you, have to, you would end up multiplying together. That's kind of how that works. Okay. Um, so we want to keep all that stuff in mind as we go through and solve these radical equations. Okay? All right. So let's dive in. Um, we want to solve equations involving rational exponents and still want to talk about extraneous solutions. First guy is here. And um, we need to solve for x. We have an x there and we have an x there. But the problem is this x 
the, on the left is attached to this one half exponent. So how do we eliminate that one half exponent? We could, don't do this, but we could rewrite this in radical form and go square root of x plus 4 and then equals x minus 8 because, and then now solve it like with the last homework. Or since this is a square root, we've got to square both sides. Or we can cut out the middleman, right? And just go straight to squaring both sides. So what would that look like if I squared this and squared this? Remember what I was talking about before. Now if you multiply those exponents, which is what you'd have to do with those exponents, you're going to get 1. Then we get x plus 4 over here. And then we got to square x minus 8. Um, quick shortcut on squaring this. You'd have to go x minus 8 times x minus 8 and then double distribute. But there's a shortcut. The shortcut is square double square. What that means is we're going to square the first term, double the second term with an x, and then square the second term, and you will have squared that binomial. Square, double, square. Try that. I'll keep talking about it while we go through this um, and see if we can't shorten our work a little bit. Now we have a quadratic equation that we have to get equal to 0. So subtract x and 4. And then we can factor, and this guy will, in fact, factor into x minus 12 and x minus 5. The zero product property says that our solutions would be 12 and 5. A quick check, and you're going to want to do this as well, but a quick check to make sure this works. If I stick 12 in for x, I get 12 here, 12 plus 4 is 16, and then the square root, right, since this is in the denominator, that 2 is in the this is a square root. Square root of 16 is 4. And then plug 12 over here. 12 minus 8 is 4. 4 equals 4. That works just fine. If you plug in 5, 5 plus 4 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. Um, and then 5 here, 5 minus 8 is negative 3. And so that actually doesn't work. So the 5 becomes an extraneous solution. And your solution is just x equals 12. So do make sure that you're checking your work for extraneous solutions. Okay? All right. Next one here. Okay? Um, it's designed for you to try it, but we'll walk through it really quick. This uh, 8x plus 1 is being raised to the 1 half power in order to um, eliminate that exponent, we're going to raise that to the second power. So it just really kind of, kind of boils down to raising it to the same power as the root. Remember the root in a fractional exponent is the denominator. So these guys multiply out to 1. You get 8x plus 1 equals. Now square the x plus 2. You want to square, double, square. Subtract 8, subtract 1, and then you can factor. And this will factor into x minus 3 and x minus 1. Our two solutions should be 3 and 1. Quick check to plug in. 8 times 3 is 24. 24 plus 1 is 25. The square root of that is 5. Plug in 3 over here, and you get 5. So we're in good shape. Plug in 1. 8 times 1 is 1. I'm sorry, 8 times 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9, the square root of 9 is 3, 1 plus 2 is 3, we're in good shape there, both of these solutions definitely work, okay, all right, remember, like we said, like I said before we got started here, that if you take an even root of an equation to solve it, if you take an even root of a variable, then you have to make sure that you remember um, to include your plus or minus in your solution, okay, now, here's what I'm talking about. The other thing we have to keep in mind is kind of like our radicals, where we want to make sure we get the radicals by themselves before we eliminate the radicals. We have to make sure that the exponent is by itself before we try to eliminate the exponent. Here's what I mean. This x is being raised to the 2 fifths power. This 3 is not. This 3 has its own exponent. It's a 1. So since it's not 2 fifths, I want to make sure I divide both sides by 3. Limit, get that out of the way so that we can just work on getting rid of 
that rational exponent. Now, x to the two-fifths power. We want to raise that to a power that would result in multiplying out those two exponents to one. So my question for you is, what are we going to raise this side of the equation to? And whatever we decide, we have to raise uh, the, the right side of the equation to the same thing. Well, hopefully you're thinking five halves. Because, if you remember from fourth grade or fifth grade, whatever that was, anytime you take a fraction and multiply it by its reciprocal, you get one. We can't just raise it to the fifth power because it would not give us one. Okay? So we're going to raise these uh, um, rational exponents to its reciprocal power. Then that's going to multiply out to one. I've got to raise the right side to the 5 halves power. We get x equals 9 to the 5 halves. And I don't know what that is. So I'm going to rewrite that in radical form. Remember that the denominator is the root. So that means I'm taking an even root, right? And anytime you take an even root of a variable, you have to make sure that your solution, which is going to be the square root of 9 is 3, is, uh, has a plus or minus on it. And now we've got to raise plus or minus 3 to the fifth power. And that's going to give you plus or minus 243. Okay? And those two solutions will work. You can plug it in and check, but they'll work. But that's an example of where you've got to be careful of, of having to ra uh, take the, the even root in an equation. Okay? And there you go. Remember. If you're taking an even root of a variable when solving an equation, it results in a plus or minus solution. Okay? Next guy. Again, I want to just get whatever is being raised to that rational exponent all by itself. So here we've got to add 1. Then divide by 2. Now that 2 thirds exponent is by itself. And we want to raise both sides to the, right, the reciprocal, the 3 halves power, so that these guys will multiply out to 1. So x plus 3 equals 4 to the 3 halves power. Rewrite that as the square root of 4 to the 3rd power. And since we're even rooting in this equation, we have to make sure that we, our solution includes a plus or minus. This is plus or minus 2 to the third power. Come over here and finish it up. Plus or minus 2 to the third power, power is plus or minus 8. Now be careful not to subtract 3 from both sides and just say this is plus or minus 5 because it's not how that works. Right? We've got to take positive 8 minus 3, which is 5, and then take negative 8 minus 3, which is negative 11. So those are our two solutions we'd want to check to make sure that that's going to work. Okay, so 5 plus 3 is 8. The cube root of 8 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. That's some quick mental math that works. Negative 11. Negative 11 plus 3 is negative 8. The cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. Square that, you get 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. So both of those worked out just fine. Those are both solutions. Okay? Remember, in case uh, you know, I haven't said it enough yet, if you're taking an even root of a variable when solving, make sure your solution is plus or minus. Okay? Take a second and try number five on your own. Stop the video and then start it back up to see if you got it right. And this is what you should have gotten. Did you get three? Okay, you got to subtract three from both sides first then raise both sides to the third power. That's one-third as a reciprocal, three over one. We just don't write the one in the denominator. So anyway, third power, and you can kind of see it worked out from there. Okay? All right. Now, just like our uh, radical equations where we could have a radical on either side of the equal sign or we could have two radicals in an equation, we could have two rational exponents. Okay? 
The process is the same. We want to make sure that each side of the equal sign has only one rational exponent. So if there's a side that has two, we've got to split them up. Here we don't. We've got the rational exponent on each side. Now we want to eliminate those rational exponents. Now I know what you're thinking. You've got this 2 over here that is not being raised to the 1 3rd power, so maybe divide both sides by 2. The problem is you cannot simplify that 2 out of there on the right side. So whether it's on the left or the right side, it's still not going to go away. We might as well just leave it where it is and go ahead and raise both sides, the entire side, to the 3rd power. So these are going to multiply out to 1 and you get x plus 7. On the left side, be careful. Distribute your 3 to the 1 third here, which is going to be 1, so this is going to be x to the first power. But you also have to distribute the 3 to that exponent as well, which is a 1. And so you get 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8. So you get 8x equals x plus 7. Subtract x. Divide by 7. And x is 1. In a quick check, uh, back in that equation, and x equals 1 is going to be a valid solution, okay? All right. Now, you give it a shot. Again, stop the video and start it back up and see if you're right. And there you go. So number 7 is ready for you just to cube both sides. Got to remember to cube the 4 to get 64. 64x equals x plus 7, and just go solve for x. That way you should get 7 over 63. Um, and that is not going to be an extraneous solution. Okay? All right. Next one here. Okay? All right. So we've got two rational exponents on one side. Can't have that. So split them up. And as weird as this looks, we are perfectly okay with adding 2x plus 1 to the 1 fourth power to both sides of the equal sign to move it over to the right side. So we get x minus 1 to the 1 half power equals 2x plus 1 to the 1 fourth. Now, those... Um, Exponents are not the same, right? So what are we going to raise both sides to to make sure that we eliminate both fractional exponents? Well, if you raise the right side, if you square it, like you might want to do over here, 2 times 1 fourth is actually just 1 half. So you're still going to have a fractional exponent. So you, that's not going to work. But if you raise both sides to what, to the reciprocal of the rational exponent with the largest denominator. In other words, 4 here, that's your largest denominator, 4 here. Things work out pretty well for us. This is going to be 1. We get 2x plus 1. Half of 4 is 2. And so all we have to do now is square x minus 1. And we can do that. Square, double square. Right, and then go solve. Subtract 2x. Subtract 1 is going to be 0. So it actually just gets x squared minus 4x equals 0. At which point, all you got to do is factor out a GCF of an x. And then you're going to get two solutions of 0 and 4. A quick check of both. Right, plug in 0 for x, 0 minus 1 is negative 1, the square root of negative 1 we can't do. So 0 is going to be extraneous. 4. 4 minus 1 is 3, and this is going to be the square root of 3. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. And if you type in, as weird as this is, the fourth root of, so the square root of 3 minus the fourth root of 9, it will give you 0. So that actually works. So your solution is 4. Okay? But it's, if your rational exponents do not match, then raise it to the reciprocal of the exponent with the largest denominator, and uh, you will clear those fractional exponents. Okay? 
One more here. I'll walk you through it really quickly. Again, your exponents are not the same. So we're going to raise it to the reciprocal of the largest exponent, largest denominator exponent. In other words, 4 is bigger than 2. So raise this to the fourth power and raise this to the fourth power. That's going to be 1. Half of 4 is 2, so you're going to get x minus 7 squared. And you get x plus 5 on the right side, and then you go squared, double, square on the left side. Subtract x, subtract 5, and you get x squared minus 15x minus 54, and then factor. And you get negative 9 minus 6. Your two solutions are going to be 9 and 6 then. 6 is a problem, so you plug in 6 for x, 6 minus 7 is negative 1, and you cannot square root the negative 1, so 6 becomes an extraneous solution. <clears throat> 9 is your only solution here, okay? That's it. Hopefully that made enough sense. Uh, give your homework a shot if you uh, have questions, come on in.